Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on today's video, I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know about the Vizio 435 television. Now, this is part of the V-Series lineup from 2020, and I'm very interested to see how you guys like a video like this. Now, here's some of the highlights. It does support HDR10+, which is normally a Samsung thing, and it also supports Dolby Vision, so you have the best of two worlds in this television set. It also has Google Chromecast and it supports Apple AirPlay. So if you want to learn more about this TV set, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Here we have a Vizio V-Series 43-inch smart television set. This TV set also has a low energy cost to run it year-round. So when you open up the box, this is all the parts that you're going to get inside. You get the feet for the base, you get the power cord, you get the remote control with some batteries. You're also going to get the screws for the base and a quick startup guide. When you take out the box, you're going to have this plastic around the edges. Just go ahead and peel that off. And just so you know, there's no plastic on the screen. This is a 4K UHD 60Hz panel with 120Hz motion. It also has a full ray LED backlight, which increases the brightness and also gives you more realistic colors. I know it's a VA panel, but quite honestly, the viewing angles are not that great. And here's another side view. But I will tell you, if you're looking directly at the screen from the front, you'll be very happy with the picture quality. Now, unlike the Samsung television, the bezel on this TV set is a little bit thicker. Kind of reminds me of LG, but it does have this indention around the screen to give it more of a premium look. Besides the logo on the front of the TV set, there's also an IR sensor here, and that's where you point the remote control to. Now, let's take a look at this remote control, but some things I want to tell you about it is that this TV set does not have Bluetooth, so this remote control is not going to be able to learn your devices like PlayStations, like the Samsung would. Also, I will tell you that this remote control doesn't have voice command and the TV set doesn't have voice command. Take a look at this remote control. You can see there's an input and a power button on top. Now below that, you're going to find some hot keys and then you have a menu button. This TV set does have free content that streams off Wi-Fi. You can press that button right there to get directly into it. And beside it is an info button so you can see what's happening on your screen. Next, you have your up and down side to side as well as OK. You have your back button. And then you have your home button that takes you right back to the main screen. Here you have closed capture, your volume, mute button, channels up and down, and a number pad. And the last thing I'll show you guys is down here where it says pick. That's the way you can switch from your picture mode, from your sports mode to your gaming mode, back to calibrated mode. Now take a look at the back of the TV set. We have three HDMI inputs. Now input one is eARC, which is HDMI 2.1 and input 2 and 3 or HDMI 2.0. You also have one USB input as well. There's also an antenna input so you can run over the air antenna. There's analog outputs which is very rare on TV sets nowadays. Then you have a fiber optic output as well. Now down here you have composite inputs for older VCRs or DVD players and an ethernet input for hooking it up to a modem. And it does have some basic controls on the back. You have your power right there. You have your volume up and down. And then you have an input. It also has some screw holes. If you want to wall mount it, it'd be very easy. And as you can see, I took one of the screws out to take a closer look. The interesting thing is that the power cord is up this way, so it makes it a little bit harder to plug in. But I think they should include a right angle cable to uh, make that look a lot cleaner. Now, when it comes to dynamic range, this TV set supports everything. It has HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, which Samsung uses, Dolby Vision, and HLG. The TV set also supports Apple AirPlay. So a lot of people want to do screen mirroring with television sets, but here's something interesting. Let me show you guys some options on this Samsung phone. So normally when you screen share a Samsung phone, you go down here to where it says Smart View. So again, this TV set is going to allow you to cast things like HBO, YouTube channels. And to give you guys an example, here's a YouTube screen. That little icon right there is how you cast things. So you go here, hit Game Room, and then it'll pop up on your bigger screen. 
And this gives you an idea of what the casting looked like. But here's the thing, when you hit the home button on the remote control, at the very top here, you have cast. It goes into this Google feature screen. But the interesting thing is that this TV set doesn't have voice command. Now, if you have LG or Samsung, you'll probably be disappointed with the app store that comes on this TV set. In fact, the application that I can't find that a lot of people like is HBO Max, as well as the new Discovery Plus. So there is some good applications in here, but again, you're not gonna have the selection that you have on the other devices. So if you need certain apps, I probably won't get this TV set or I would use external player like a Roku or something like that. So now I'm gonna show you guys the menu system, but keep in mind the reason I show you the menus on these videos is because when you go to the store, you don't really get a chance to look at it. In fact, most stores show this glamorous 4K footage but they don't really show you what the TV does in detail unless you, you know, find a salesperson and ask for remote control. So uh, let's take a look at the menu system. Now take a look at this menu. It's laid out pretty nice. On top, you're gonna to have your home. You can slide over to movies. You also have shows at the top here. And with Vizio, it comes with free channels that streams over the air, as long as you have internet access. So you can see a couple of choices right there. Next, you have an extra button. And this will show you how to use the television set, like it shows you how to hook up Amazon Alexa. It shows you how to hook up the Apple HomeKit. And there's a few things that you can customize, like the backdrop for the Chromecast. You also can do custom roles. And if you have Google Assistant, you can hook up with those as long as you use the Vizio application to log into it. And they also have a watch and learn so you can learn more about the TV set. So if you need help with anything, you just come over here and you can pretty much watch the video and get used to how everything works. And if you press the menu right here on the remote control, you get a sidebar. Under the sidebar, you have picture. And the great thing about this TV set, you have a lot of different settings like sports, vivid. You can also go through here and change everything individually. You also have advanced picture down here where you can go in here and change the black levels, super resolution, enhance the edges, local contrast. And they do have a gaming mode that's going to give you the best colors and calibrations as well. And you can also edit the picture mode over here. And you can also save the picture mode and copy it over to another profile just in case you need to have that available. Then when it comes to audio, you can use the speakers in the TV set, turn them off and on. You also have different surround sound. You have DTS Virtual X. You can turn it off and on right here. You have volume leveling. And this is great for when you get those commercials where someone is talking too loud. You have a balance on here. And a lot of people will like this, it's called lip sync. So for example, if you use something where it's not syncing right, you can come in here and you can adjust it to make sure everything comes in at the same time. Of course, you have your digital out, audio out, dialogue enhancer, and this is where you can take that HDMI 2.0 and turn it off and on. And under networks, you can change your Wi-Fi or you can connect it to a wired network. If you hook it up to antenna, you can scan for channels. You have accessibility where you can have it to talk back to you. And then under systems, this is where you can change the languages. So it's only a few in there. And then of course you have the time, you can change the name of the TV. You can also hide inputs that you're not using. And there's a few other things like here, like the power indicator, if you turn this on, then you're gonna find a light over here in the corner that turns off and on. See how I turned that off? This is where you do your TV timers, which is a long way to get to that if you need to use that. And the blank screen allows you to start watching a program, but let's say for example, you're going to bed and all you need to do is hit the audio. You can hit blank screen and it turns everything off except for the sound. And then you can put a pin code in to lock people out of different settings. And it also supports the CEC. So when you use an HDMI, you can turn on gaming systems and DVRs and stuff like that with the TV HDMI. The last thing you have admin, and this is where you can go here and check for updates, reboot the TV, put it back to factory when you're selling it, and you can turn off that store demo just in case you hit the wrong button when you first got it. And here's the online instruction book built right into the TV set. So I know that was a lot of information, but if you was looking for a certain feature, I hope you was able to find it in that menu system. But uh, I just don't understand why every single TV doesn't have Bluetooth. It can't be that expensive for that chip to make the TV have Bluetooth. But anyway, that's enough about my gripes. Now we're gonna do some gaming, but I'm gonna show you guys the input lag of this TV set first. Now to check the input lag, I bought this little box here. You guys might've seen it on my previous videos, but really how it works is 
this is connected to one of the inputs on the back of the TV. In fact, I have it hooked up to the eARC one. And when you press this button, it sends out a signal. Then there's a sensor right here. So what it does is it sees how long it takes to go from this cable over to the screen, and then it measures it in milliseconds. So let's give it a try here. So you can see in your standard mode is reading 50.6. Next, I'm gonna turn the TV over to gaming mode. Go over here where it says gaming, hit okay. And let's try it again. So we're getting around 10.1 milliseconds. And I will tell you the grid is, if it's less than 10 milliseconds, it's usually pretty decent for gaming as far as response time. One thing I want to point out real quick, and this is not something that's very important, but these gaming consoles will not slide underneath the television set like it will on the Samsung TU7000, 8000, or even the Q-Series. So after I tested it with games, I personally didn't notice much lag. Everything seems to work pretty smooth. So overall, I think you'll be happy. Now, if you're going for a PS5 or one of the new Xbox Series X, I think you'll notice that uh, everything's gonna work good on that as well. Now, even though this TV set does have HDMI 2.1, keep in mind that's for audio pass-through. That is not gonna enhance the picture quality. And I did do some tests, I toggled over, I changed some cables. You're not gonna see a big difference whatsoever. So there's a thing called continuity and I uh, decided to introduce this on my, this video. And what it is, is that we're gonna use a grayscale and this will show any imperfections and the uh, screen where there's darker areas. So there's not a lot of light in there. So uh, let's check it out. So here's something people have been asking me to do on some of my videos. So I thought I'd give it a try. This is called a grayscale uniformity test. So what you're looking for is around the edges does it stay the same color? And you can see there is a little bit of color shade here on the sides right there. But I will tell you all the TV sets in this price range will not be perfect as far as having a pure solid screen. So just take in consideration that when you buy a TV set, it's not gonna be perfect unless you wanna spend a lot of money to get the best screen possible. So here's my final thoughts about this TV set. And I will tell you that it is a bargain television set. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking for TV sets. In fact, I was looking at an article the other day that the first 4K television set that came to production was $20,000. So somewhere along the line, we thought three to $500 was acceptable to buy a top-end TV set, but we haven't got there yet, but we will someday when there's 8K on the market. But here's what it comes down to. The things I don't like about this TV set is that the viewing angles were less desirable than some of the other TV screens. In fact, if you're in an area where people are gonna be on each side of the television set, I think you'd be very dissatisfied. The second thing is that it doesn't have Bluetooth. So those are my two gripes about this TV set. But now here's the positives. It does have three HDMI inputs. It does have HDMI 2.1 for audio pass-through. It also has a pretty good screen if you're sitting right in front of it. You got that HDR10 Plus and Adobe Vision. So if you wanna get the best picture quality, you can get a Blu-ray player that supports those formats and it'll be an awesome television set. So overall, if you're looking for a TV set and you really love the Vizio brand, I can recommend it with the information that I just gave you. I'm Tech Steve. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Peace.